Suzanne Umbach. George Knoll. Sean Harley. Derek Jones. Lisa Maloney. Stanford Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of 5-15-2019 regular session. The minutes from the meeting on April 15, 2019. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept the minutes of 5 15, 2019. Is there any discussion? No. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Citizens' input. Start here in the front. Anybody? State your name, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. Me? Yeah. All right, Carol Arnett, I would like to thank the board and on behalf of the library and the Friends of the Library for uh, submitting $250 for our summer reading program. Very well. Jane Hall. I was going to thank you for the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I handed out uh, some uh, working papers for you on the TGIF Argus. Uh, which is to our first event should be on a week from tomorrow. No, tomorrow's right. Thursday. Right. I don't know. Whole day long. <laughs> anyway, June 14th. Let's go with that one. There are two things that I need to ask of the council that I don't happen to have, and one would be um, barricades for Smith Street, and someone probably to help me at deciding where we don't want traffic, we don't want car traffic except for vendors to be able to get in, unload, and get out. And so, um, it, you may have a better idea of where this should happen. I'm thinking right where the uh, library parking spot is there on the north side of the library because we have a house behind there that they're going to need to get to their parking area. Um, and then barricade across and we'll have to have someone there to allow vendors to come on in and to exit to kind of police that so we don't get through uh, vehicle traffic through there. And then the east side of Smith, um, I have looked at Julia's, well, at that Smith Street, American is going to donate the use of um, a facility for us and I'm thinking we'll put it and I don't have the dimension on it yet that they Val wasn't sure she was going to try to get back with them but it could either sit lengthwise there or crosswise but I don't know we probably need a barricade <coughs> on east of whatever that unit is to make sure we don't get people driving down in there but the people who live in that little house it appears that behind the block building Beside the house, there are a couple of parking areas, and it looks like maybe they have driven there, but I never. There's only there's a couple lives upstairs. There's nobody in the bottom. No, the, that house, the house. Yeah, not, the brick house. No, not no. the brick house. The one that's it used no. to be no gas. Station. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is someone living there, but I never happened to see him. For me to go over and talk to them, because I don't think they want to spring it on them. They need to know what we're doing and make certain they can. Their house, um, and then I don't know how we keep. Uh, I don't know what time Jamie's planning on setting up electric for sure, but I would say by five o'clock we need all of the tra traffic that might or vehicles parked downtown. They need to be gone. So do is there a in that there's some vehicles there? I'm not going to be able to probably find the people or track them down, and I don't won't know who they belong to. Is there any signage that can be put out that there's no parking after? Same was it for up and break again. Yeah. yeah, and I think, and I'm not sure who to see to get that <coughs> done either. So those are two things that are a little bit out of my purview. I don't have the barricades hanging out. Was, uh, 
since I'm helping her and I told her I'd help her, I'll, I'm gonna, I've already planned that whole Friday to be there. So I'll take care of coming down here and getting the signs and stuff and seeing they get up there and we'll get the barricades. Like she said on Smith, we just don't want nobody driving down Smith Street toward me at all. And then we'll make sure there by that little house that people can get out on the other side. So I'll, I'm going to be working all day, so I'll get with Jamie and we'll, we'll get everything pretty much taken care of. But I'm going to help him with the electrical part too, getting all that hooked up. And then uh, probably Joey uh, Stone will come and do the water, get all that done. And then after the thing, I'll have to. Uh, Maybe if you recruit some help, I'm going to have to kind of take care of getting all the stuff put away from you. You can have a bunch of us there. Well, okay, yeah, as many as many Dylan will be there and be some others. So we'll have plenty. Well, I know, but yeah. I mean, I have to, I, mean, well, I need permission from the board well, to get that done. He just gave it to you, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know if this is something needed board vote because I was trying to hunt down the police. I wasn't sure whether I needed the police so, or who okay. Am I counting that there's, there's 38? Well, that's counting American. Yeah. Uh, yes, and I probably have room. I think what we're going to find is that people have verbally said, oh, I'm coming, but they never filled out an application. Right. And I'm, we're afraid people are going to show up thinking. And these people are the people we have applications from. Martin, so I think we're going to have... Are you, are you guys aware of she, the fire trucks being down there then? Yes. So that's already yeah. taken care of. I think, uh, can we get tables? Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm going to talk to you after. But yeah, we'll okay. get it. Yeah, Thank you, sir. And yeah. I think the EMTs are maybe bringing a vehicle and they're going to have a booth. And so I think, and then Ray Trump's bus is going to be there. Ray said he would block all the streets off we need. So. Yeah, so we've got, I think we've got it pretty well covered. Thanks, Lonjie. Good job. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Okay. We'll see on the 15th. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else, citizens' input? <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing you waving out there. <laughs> Go ahead, state your name, please. My name is Kelly Young, and I live at 1534 Seaboro, Michigan Road. Okay. And, um, Excuse you, us, do you want us to go ahead and read this first? That would be great. Suzanne basically be everything that I'm... <laughs> 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 or clear, I should say. My wife says I mumble, so I'm letting her speak. <laughs> Dear Argus Town Council members, the neighbors in closest proximity of the Joe Gady and Megan Asso residents at 15310 Michigan Road are writing to voice concerns about activities at this property. The new residents are organic farmers who have a flock of chickens between 20 and 30 that are free range. Some of the chickens venture onto our three properties daily. Mr. Gady and Ms. Asif have allowed the chickens to roam without seeking permission from us in advance. The chickens have bothered areas with newly seeded grass a newly seeded wildflower field, and a small garden area. Even after voicing concern to the owners, the chickens continue to roam and have to be chased away daily. Mr. Gady and Ms. Asif have also placed three beehives in close proximity to a children's play area, which is a safety issue for this neighbor. These beehives could easily have been placed at the end of the property, away from our outdoor living space. Mr. Gady and Ms. Asif have parked a blue Dodge Caravan next to the outbuilding. It has not been moved since they began living at this residence in the early part of 2019. It appears to be used as a storage facility, as neighbors have witnessed them unloading supplies from it on numerous occasions. We fully understand that we live in, in an agriculture area and that there are permitted uses. However, our agricultural area is unique in that there are homes in close proximity to each other, much like some of the homes in Argus. We are concerned about the other plans that Mr. Gady and Ms. Asif have for their area and what issues will arise with it. Does he plan on having other livestock? Is there a limit to the number of animals that he can have for his lot size? What is the minimum acreage to be considered a farm? It is our sincere hope that you will be able to assist us with our concerns. We thank you for your help in this matter. Sincerely, 
and it's Kelly Young, mm -hmm. John Savoy, Savoy. <coughs> Pam Davis. Those are the three signatures. And Mark. And Mark. And Mark. Okay. Yes, he, is, he, wanted, he didn't get it signed. He couldn't say it. He was MIA. The signature isn't here, but yeah. He'll vouch for it. He's a neighbor with concerns. Yes, sir. Well, in addition to what Kelly said, I also had a note of contact the Marshall County Sheriff's Office yesterday and have a deputy come out to speak to him about the situation. Um, I was, we were told that if these chickens are creating damage, which they have, that you know further legal action can be pursued against them. But we, need, we just, there's a lot of unanswered questions there. Maybe you can provide us with some, some input here. Well, Chuck, do you want to step in on this at all? <laughs> 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 yeah, I what know. does it say? I haven't seen it yet, so I haven't looked it up because I didn't know. May I ask? Happening to Who is this? Um, I don't know the people's name, but <laughs> um, they just moved in uh, the first of the year. It's about what half a mile north of. It's the three town. houses, three homes over from Mrs. Demick's to the north. Yeah. Or three houses south of Coal Alliance. Yeah. Right next house. to Mark Dean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first house south of you, Mark? It's where Mark Snyder lived. Yeah. Remember where Mark Snyder lived? No. Oh, well, I didn't know him. Mike the first house south of Mark. Dr. Mike Davis's yeah. So has any documentation been taken <laughs> on the damages? Have you guys pushed further with the law at all? Well, I had, the, I had the initial contact with him yesterday. It was the um, first phone call. Have, have, but have you documented anything so far? Pictures. Well, we do have pictures. Oh, we have pictures. You have pictures and, yes. and, and yeah. proof that this is yes. happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, that's step one, right? I mean, uh, the remedy, obviously, is to, I mean, I don't know, to get him in here, possibly, if you don't want to pursue court actions. That way we can try and settle it in-house, I guess. But um, that, I guess that's your personal preference. The property owners. What's the regulations? I mean, what can he do with his chickens and what? how sure. can we protect our property? We, I mean, <laughs> we definitely have to look that up because off the top of my head, I can't. We have too many ordinances to remember. Let me, okay. let me <laughs> kind of weigh in somewhere if I can. Um, from the sounds of it, you're outside the town limits, is that correct? Okay. But we're just in the two mile zone. But we're in the two mile zone. Right. So what that, what that means is that. Uh, town ordinances would not necessarily apply. So let's say, for example, there was a town ordinance that says uh, no chickens permitted in the town. If there was an ordinance like that, then the town could enforce that and say, all right, Mr. Dady and Mrs. Asif, you can't have these chickens in the town. But they're outside of the boundaries of the town. They're not within the town, okay? The only other thing that the town has as an enforcement tool or a way to regulate some kind of an activity like this is this land use and development code, which is what we would kind of think of as our zoning ordinance, okay? Now, in that, I'm not sure, and, and Chuck, if, if Chuck knew of something, I'm sure he had already piped up, but I don't know of anything in there that's gonna cover a situation where you've got chickens running at large, you got beehives, uh, and, and I don't know, it sounds like a, a storage vehicle. Is that a fair thing to describe it or a way to describe it? Yeah, and look, it appears to be like a non-functioning vehicle. I mean, we've not seen it. Does it have license plates on it? We don't know because he has it parked so close to the building that we can't see it. Okay. And I'm not going to trespass. At the end of the day, and not to take up, you know, 25 minutes getting into a dissertation about this, but if the Land Use Development Code provides any kind of a relief, to any of these activities, then that could be a, an enforcement mechanism. But if it's zoned correctly and if they have chickens, they have bees, if those are permitted uses for their zoning classification, they might be okay. Now, that doesn't mean that they can just have chickens uh, getting on your property and causing damages. That's an issue, but it may be something that you have to take up on your own. Okay? There are things called nuisance statutes, all right? That, that may come into play here. 
and other things that may occur, such as if chickens are coming over and they're eating petunias. I don't know what chickens eat, but they come over and eat petunias. They want bugs, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, but if they cause some kind of damage, then there could be a, a claim for compensation because of the damage that their chickens cause. But in terms of what involvement the town can have, I think the town's going to be limited to whatever may or may not be contained in that land use development code. Okay. But is there a minimum amount of acreage to be quote unquote called a farm? Well, the, the whole label farm isn't really going to rule the day here one way or the other. It's really going to be what is the zoning classification, what's a permitted use in that zoning classification. In other words, what can they do on their property as it is zoned now? In other words, if, if they wanted to have 10 pigs in the backyard, maybe they could do that if it's zoned agricultural. Okay, and maybe that's you know smelly, it's nasty, who knows? Um, but maybe they could well do that because it's zoned correctly. But again, the issue that you're describing is is basically something about it. if there are chickens that are basically on your property, that's a separate issue than just what they're doing. It's basically then it's causing harm or, or damage to your property. If the chickens are on your property, do you have the right to harvest them? <laughs> I honestly are not going to be the one to give you permission to do that. Yes. But I understand. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> the land use book is also online at townofargus.com and it is searchable. So if you have like a search word like chickens, you know, you can search it there. Well, the, the questions in regards like acreage and all that, would that also be in that? Yes. Okay, and yeah. then it's called the land use and development code. Yeah. Has this ever been an issue in the past? No. First time for everything. No. I think it right, and that's that's why we're a little concerned you might not find exactly what you're looking for because this might be a first time scenario. Right, you know, again, judging by the age of the homes and as you drive through the area, they've been, I know it's zoned ag, but it appears to be quite tranquil residential area. Well, sure, it, there's gotta be limitations, yeah. But yeah. that's what I was trying to say earlier is it, being outside the town boundary, like, there were horses up there 40 years ago. Oh, I know that. Yeah. I know they were that. on our property. Yeah. <laughs> they were beef cattle, right? But there was also, it was also yeah. fenced in. Correct. I don't that think the horse would jump in the yeah, fence. Yeah, that was never came over to my house. <laughs> 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 you for that. So as of right now, I guess our hands are tight, so we do all of us do a little more research. And let's Chuck found something right there real quick. Um, I can let you know what can be taking place out there. And all of you are in the ag district, that's what your zoning is, right. okay? Permitted uses, grazing and pasture land, livestock, agricultural crop production, crop processing, product storage, uh, seed fertilizer sales, farm implements, um, small wind towers, you have single family, you can have child care, manufacturing home, home occupation, you can also have a nature preserve Recreational trails, um, those are all permitted uses. That's what, what about fencing? Is I, I can tell you what my grandfather said, good fences make good neighbors. Okay, now okay. with that being said, <laughs> if, if said neighbor puts up a fence, with him being a farm, are there any special, does he have to have a survey because he's quote unquote a farm? Versus? Not, not as far as, as zoning goes, but as far as where your property line is or where his property line is, a fence is made to be set on the property line. Correct. Okay. You didn't have a setback on that fence? You don't have to have a setback. No, it goes right on the property line. So you're, um, you're looking at having to know where your property line is. Have, have you had yours surveyed or no, did, the, did they have their the, surveyed? The party in question here has talked about putting up a fence. So I guess our question is, you know, should he be doing the survey or since he wants it up, should he be the guy that's getting the survey or Something not? To, talk to the township trustee about is, I, I believe that it's still the, the law that as you look at the property line, you're responsible for the 
cost of the installation of a fence to the right half of the property line, your neighbor is responsible for the cost to the other side. So that's something if, if they're going to If I don't want it. Pardon? If I don't want it. Sorry. You're out of luck. If he, uh, if he chooses to graze the whole property, you will have to put up half the fence. I, I ran into this, I have some property out on Juniper Road, and uh, the neighbor has a hay field behind me, and he put up the fence, and I had to pay half of it because the front of it, and I, same thing, I went and looked, and there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't want the fence either, but, you know, <coughs> that's that the way the law states. I had to be that doesn't. That's I don't seem right, but there ain't. Well, I guess like there's always precedent that's, for everything. That's, that's a different that, that issue for us there, so. Yeah, <laughs> that law's been in effect for a long time. Hundred years. Hundred years. So what, I, I guess, pardon my stupidity, but why should we pay for him to maintain, basically run his farm? That, that, that doesn't. So I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you volunteer to do that. I'm oh, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm sure. If it's something that you wanted to have put up or installed. No, no, he wants it up, not us. Yeah. Then knock himself out, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, but if you think he's on your property, then you can bring that into question. But it goes back to my original question. We still have to pay for this right-hand side, or if he puts it up, he puts it up. If he puts it up and doesn't say anything, I would let him put it up. Yeah, just right. let him, don't say nothing. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> if he puts it up, then it's going to be <laughs> come back. I think he's got to have a survey first before he can do anything. Mm -hmm. Right now he's going off of my survey, <clears throat> counting out the feet. So, so now he's over on her 30 feet. Okay, well your survey isn't correct? No, mine is, but he's going off my post to go to try to find his other side. With a tape measure. That's what a surveyor does. Yeah, but that would have to, you have to pay to have that done, I would think, right? And he's not, this gentleman's not a surveyor by name. Okay, but I can go on to GIS or I can go on to my deed and see that I have, my property is 812 feet from my other property line. He knows where the property line is. I can go 812 feet from his property line, and that's my other side. And that's legal. And that's legal to do. Shoot the chickens. Okay, with well, that being said, <laughs> I'm sorry that we didn't give any clear answers and, and about what we're at the two being in the two mile zone. So as he said, you just read what's in that book. It's what you get. Um, <laughs> I'm interested in this now, but I don't I'm like Terry, I don't think there's anything that the town can get into to do it. But. So what should be our Follow-up plan, I guess. I mean, I want to sit there and torment you about these stupid chickens. But. Collect evidence and, and, and follow up with a lawful order of some kind. That's yeah, exactly that's what true. I do as a property owner. So right? I just keep calling the, the marshal, sheriff's deputy, front name. Possibly get a hold of the lawyer or something of those means. That way, some kind of you know, you have your proper processes set in place before just jumping boat. And, you know. Uh, doing something out of anger, you know, it, 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 I don't know, I, I, would, I would go to a lawyer and get some actual legal advice. You would, and take all the pictures you can take when there's chickens on your property, whatever, take pictures of it. That what That's in your back pocket then. It's his responsibility to keep his livestock and animals on his property. Dog love chickens. Okay. At the end of the day, it is his responsibility. Now, you'll have to go through a legal to get that. But, Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for coming in. Anyone else got any citizens' input? <laughs> if not, we'll move on to old business. Thank you. Attorney report. Oh, uh, a couple things. Guys, I just want to let you know that uh, the next, I'm sorry, it's not the next meeting, but it's the first meeting in July, July the 3rd. I will not be here. I don't think that anybody from my office is going to be able to cover that either. Um, very good. I'll be here. <laughs> um, the other thing I just want to let you know about, we have another ordinance <coughs> case that's kind of in the works, and that if you recall, that's basically what allows Corey to collect that law enforcement uh, pot, if you will. Um, so we got that on the file. The next thing is kind of, it looks like it's under the attorney report, is that electric ordinance 2019-7, if you want to get into that, if you have any other questions about anything before that. This this is something that if you want the particulars in regards to the, the cast exhibit A, you're going to have to get that from Jamie. But 
as I understand, it's basically a new classification to the electric rate schedule. Um, as I understand, there's not really anybody that uh, falls into this category as of yet, uh, but it's something that's kind of a uh, thinking ahead, if you will. Uh, but it does create a new rate classification. Uh, I can I can add a little bit to that, Derek. Yep. Um, we have a large power ordinance right now. This is a large power, high load factor. Uh, it just drops the kilowatt price if somebody comes in and uses a, a boatload of kilowatts. It's just another just another tool we have to offer a different rate. That's what this is. So. No, that, that's it in a nutshell. That's it. It's <laughs> a great thing. It's that, a good thing. Yeah, well, that being said, that uh, ordinance 2019 7, uh, amending that schedule of rates and charges to create a new rate classification. Do you want to pass this? A motion to pass it on all three readings. Motion to pass it on motion one reading. To suspend the rules and pass on all three readings. Ordinance 2019 7. Second. Motion and second to suspend the rules and pass the ordinance 2019-7 on all three readings. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Accept the Turner report. That's all you have. Motion to accept the Turner report. I'll make a motion to accept the Turner report. Is there a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Excuse me, same sign. <clears throat> Motion carried. Boy. Chuck DeWitt. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're up again. Thank you. Um, just wanted to give you a couple of updates. Um, the trailers out on 31, we're working on those. Um, Derek and I spoke a couple times this week. I have been emailing back and forth with Mr. Asif Akbar, um, best I can say it. And uh, he said that uh, I told him my patience was running. Well, actually, I didn't say that. He said, when are they leaving Argus, question mark, question mark. You've given us many stories, exclamation point. My patience, bold, underlined, is completely gone. When, 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 question mark, question mark, question mark. He wrote back to me saying, I'm doing everything humanly possible and making progress. I'm negotiating with movers and we'll know in a few days when they can when they can schedule. It's 800 miles run and these big loads are not allowed on highways all the time. So one unit will take three to four days to be able to be transported to Delaware. I cannot transport on weekends. There are four units, so it all depends upon the availability of trucks. I'm asking for as many trucks as I can get. However, I have no control over that. I will keep it posted. So we do have correspondence. We think they're moving. Um, and try and get that out of here. So just so everybody's aware of that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to let um, council know, and um, George and Suzanne were at the meetings last night. We had a BZA meeting, and then it was followed by a planning commission meeting. And I want to tell all of you and everybody here that you now have a working BZA and a working planning commission. They are um, up to speed on what they are doing, understand what the process is and, what, and how they're trying to accomplish it. Everything's not perfect. We still are you know, kind of new. We're not like Culver where we have many cases every month, but it's kind of like, you know, we, we get them here and, and we train. So it's been a little over a year, and I think we're right now at a place where we're comfortable and, and they're doing a good job. Rob Herford did an excellent job last night um, running the BZA and bringing that to conclusion. And um, Lindsay Shively, um, was outstanding. I thought she just was phenomenal in what she did and how she handled what we had before us. So um, both boards are, are working in, and doing a very good job. I'll second that. I was, a, I was at the meeting and basically to make sure things get followed according to our land use development codes, 
um, they did. I mean, and it was just, honestly, I didn't have to do much. Um, they are working on things. I think Chuck's giving them kind of a, a handout, kind of a, a manual, if you will. Um, but they walked through the statutory requirements. They followed the stuff in the code. It was handled the way it needs to be handled. And I think I, that's all I have, unless you have questions. Well, I guess I do have one more comment. <laughs> and uh, I think that the time has come and we need to be looking into the near future as to how we want to regulate uh, rented properties. Right now, we have some people in rental properties, not only in Argus, Plymouth, Lopez, Culver, um, everywhere that are in pretty deplorable conditions. We do not have an ordinance that addresses rental properties and the upkeep. We were, uh, Christine and I were in one today. Um, landlord shut the water off because he didn't want them in there, so he shut the water off. Water's been off for a week. People living in a place without water, and they have kids. And that's not unusual throughout our county. So I'm just going to bring this up. I'll bring it up to everybody that I see and, and meet. But I think if we could have some type of a rental ordinance that had minimum standards, you know, that had minimum standards. You know, some of these landlords are not supplying anything. Are you talking about like? Um like Warsaw and then they have like a commission that goes around and inspects rentals? I don't know what I'm recommending <laughs> other, than the, other than the fact that I want to get people out of these conditions right. and I think they're suppressed by landlords and, and I don't think that's really what we want as a community. So I just really would like you to kind of start thinking about it, you know, and of course, we would have to look at, okay, now we have, we put together minimum standards, how do we police these, okay? Um, I understand and it, it costs money, you know, when I don't want to go to the council and say, hey, give us a bunch of money so we can, you know, take care of these slum wars. Um, but on the other hand, somehow we need to raise this up and, and make it better for the people that are the most disadvantaged. So, be thinking about it, we'll talk about it, <coughs> up. maybe we'll get us, uh, some type of study together, have a work session. Chuck, do you have any thoughts on steps or thoughts on what something like this requirements, basic requirements should look like? Or well, I, would you be I, willing to give some thought to that and yeah. report back to us? Yeah, I will. I, I would like to see it as for all jurisdictions to have the same type of, of code, the same type of ordinance. Mm -hmm. That way we're not looking at something in La Paz that's different than we do in Argus or Bourbon or Breed. So I would like to get everybody on board to put together this ordinance and then adopt it for their own jurisdictions. And then when we go into these places, we have the same thing to look at. It's absolutely appalling that they turn water off and there's children in the house. I, just... I have a question back on the trailers. From what you read, there are many exceptions or possibilities for this being drug out over a period of time. Mm -hmm. do we, have we given them a time frame? Can we give them a time frame? What kind of teeth can we put into it? What can we do? make sure this happens. What What do you want to do with some, the owner who lives in Delaware out of our jurisdiction? What can we do? The best thing that we can do is keep pushing, I believe, from behind and keep get, getting them in the right direction. By the time you put together uh, a lawsuit or something else that, that's going to be taking up time and uh, town resources, I don't think that's the way to go. You so know? he's calling the shots basically on this. I don't think so. I think you're totally wrong on that. I hope so. <laughs> no, I, I, I know that you are. Okay. So, you know, we are 
working on this until I brought this up and made an issue out of it. Right. Nobody cared. We right. passed it every day. Yep. I brought this up, so please let me see it to the end. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for the help you've given us yeah. on the BZA and the uh, Plan Commission because you, you guided us well through it. I do appreciate those books you gave us. And, and uh, we are thankful that you are doing these ordinance forces. Because we wouldn't be able to do it without you, let's put it that way. But we wouldn't get it done. Is that what you have there, Chuck? That's it. I said okay. too much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Business application. Everybody has one in front of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've went through all this for about two and a half months now. We just finally got down to the actual application. It's been redone to meet the requirements as far as what the application says. It does look very nice. Has everybody had a chance to look at the application? Yes. And your thoughts then? I personally don't have any problems with it. Uh, I think it, they're an asset to the town, and I think the work that they're doing up there is very nice from what I can see from the outside. Uh, they have been in the community for a long time, and I think they would like to stay in the community for a long time. Uh, those are my thoughts, so I really don't have any opposition to this myself. We had said we would research each application. What research has been done on this? that was in our program. Besides personal? We just said in our business program, we said each application would be researched. And I'm asking, has there been any research done? I mean, are we following our own rules, basically? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't explain to me what you research. Your past, I, <clears throat> they've, they've got everything listed here. We know them. They've been here for years. I, 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 I understand. My mother doesn't want to do the good old boy system. I understand exactly. that. Right. I understand exactly. that. Yeah. But th to be more specific on certain criteria of research, I mean, besides what we're asking for in the application, yes, we're supposed to come together, and we mentioned about talking about it before just it's loading so into it. Uh, into, I don't know, uh, into being accepted, but uh, beyond specific research, I don't know what else we would need, but what the applications provide. Right. So as far as specific, my specific research, I've intentionally stopped just to look in there to see the work that they've been doing. I get, you know, that was all I knew to do as far as research goes, just to see if they're making any actual effort to do what they're saying that they want to do, and I believe that they are. Well, like you, Sean, I looked at it, but I also went and asked questions. I want to know why this hood had to be this way. I want to know how they had to run everything. I asked a lot of questions about, uh, you know, there's a lot of cost in putting this thing in. And then I found out, I talked to an electrician, uh, and he was telling me about the hood, about the sprinkler systems, and how everything had to be done, and because they, they, his company has put some of these in. And I realized they, there was a lot of uh, rules, and regulations, and standards they had to meet. The only thing, Suzanne, I, I, I just, I'm asking this because I, I just, I made in my mind need some more information. But are you kind of against this because we're giving so much money to one person, or are you against the Burkitts? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not against the Burkitts. I am against. I feel like this has been pushed on us. And when I look at this application, it's not complete. What's, what's missing? If you look at the application that's online, 
and the one we've been given, the company's three-year financial projection attached, this application does not have that line. That line is missing on the completed application. And on the application that we had, that was completed March 22nd, the program was passed May 15th. They had not completed that line on that application. Now on the current application, that line doesn't exist. But yet on the one on the line, it does. So it appears it's been left off of this. Did they get this application here in the town building? No, it was one I gave them, so you can fault me. I've got so many of these, and it must have been one that I had either before or not the right one. Uh, I don't have opinion one way or the other. My, pro my job was to put the program together for you. But sitting back here, I, I understand what you're saying, and I see that. But moving forward, I guess I look how we can talk about this for the next six months, but we're either going to have to at some point make a decision and do something. I want to follow so, our own rules. If we have an application, then let's follow it. We're making exceptions because we know this person. I don't see that as making an exception. I mean, Suzanne, you may know everybody that goes up there, and you, that won't make a, I mean, that should make your difference. That's how you should vote. You should vote with your gut. So as I, I guess moving forward, I say this, if you're not for it and the others want it, then do it. If they're all against it, then don't do it. Anytime so. you vote emotionally, you're often making a mistake. I want to vote with my head. I want to think this thing through. I well, the I've said up there, you vote with your gut. So at least I did. Maybe I did it wrong, but I did a pretty good task up there. So I don't know. There's the application that I have. I, we can put this off another two weeks, and I don't think that's going to help them. So and the worst thing I'd see is somebody 000. to close and move out. They're asking for 10000 They've already gotten 5000 from ACDC because they knew they couldn't get the 10000 immediately. We hadn't passed it last time. So they went and got a loan. So now they're coming back and asking for 10 again. And I also just spoke to him yesterday, and his cost that went up probably another 15000 because he's That's got a... That's the cost of business. Okay. He's but finding alternative sources of yeah. income as well. For right? some, yeah, but we're trying to assist these places as much as we can. Form of private invest in, an investment in this town, we have to do something accordingly. And this is a cap, a max cap. Yeah. It doesn't say you got to give them 10000 You can give them 2 you can give them 5 It doesn't say you have to give them because there's people that make well over hundred thousand dollars or have sat in their millions for decades mm -hmm. and they won't open up their checkbook for anyone but they expect tax dollars to cover their expenses and that right now that's the kind of situation that we're in right now we have to use tax dollars to invest in our private businesses because there's not enough private investments i'm not going to let one little type you know, mess this up now i would like to come back maybe next week or something in a workshop you know we haven't sat through a budget workshop yet Fine, but fair enough. Something needs to be done for these people. They need the money, and we're gonna we're gonna hold them accountable due to a, a typo or something. I mean, I don't I don't find that moral. I don't find it a typo. I find it a purpose purpose a di a omission because they hadn't filled it out the first time. They weren't gonna fill it out, so it was omitted on this one. That's. Right or wrong, that's how I feel. That's my gut on this application. And so I could be wrong. The, page, the projected budget would be different if it was on the other application? Well, mm -hmm. We asked for a detailed business plan. We have six lines of a narrative for a detailed business plan. Is that a detailed business plan? I don't consider that. I mean, I almost feel like they're putting down they're taking five, 10 minutes, filling out this application, and we're gonna hand them $10,000. It's just too easy. Just because we know them, I feel like they should put some effort in. This is town money. This, If you wanna hand them 10,000, we'll give them money, fine. But this is tax dollars that we have a fiduciary duty to handle responsibly, and I don't feel good about it. That's my feeling, with my head and my gut. Okay, everybody, I fell into this about three years ago when I brought up a small incentive program that we gave out $3,500 a piece to the downtown businesses, and it was, uh, all that was pretty much the same thing. Hey, we want to paint our, our mm -hmm. sign, we want to do our windows and put on the application, and they got $3,500. It did make it look better downtown. I'm not going to say it didn't. 
people even admitted it did. People in the town said it was better. People in the town living here said it was better. And we did it then. And then we set up a different one. And then Mark's put the time into this. And we're working through all these little quirks and things. But uh, it's time to start moving. That's my opinion. So what do you guys want to do? Do you want to accept this application? Do you want to put it off some more? Take this and as it is, because everyone is on a case to case basis. Tell me what you want to do. Make a motion to or not to. And how much you want to give them. Or not give them. I'm pretty so we, 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 is this a two motion is this a two motion thing? One to accept the application and once that's voted on, then another one to go back for how much no, to give them, or do it all be, It would be one that you're gonna you're gonna in one motion. Because this application has ten thousand dollar cap written on it. So if you want to give them $2,000, you tell you make the motion to give them $2,000, it either passes or doesn't. If you want to give them five, it passes or doesn't. It's up to you guys. Well, then I make a motion to, to accept the application and give them the $10,000 they are asking for. I'll second it. <coughs> There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion on this? I'm going to voice, I'm gonna voice that I, I don't agree with the full $10,000. But that, that's that's my that's just my opinion. <laughs> okay, all in favor of passing this with the full ten thousand signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Now, if you want to give them a different amount, that's up to you. We just decided not to give the ten thousand. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve the application and Give them seven thousand dollars. <laughs> There's a motion. Is there a second to uh, take this grant application and give them seven thousand dollars? I'll second that. There's a second. Any other discussion? We have to be aware of which fund this is coming out of because there will be other monies coming out of that fund. So. If we want to take in other applications. There's only three thousand dollars left. That's right. So this could impinge on other possibilities for the rest of the team because we did not budget for this program. So with that being said, all in favor of giving the seven thousand dollars so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Aye. Motion carries three to two. need to get a correct application, whatever it is, I think that needs to be online. Because we just accepted one, we've set a precedent. To me, that's dangerous. This line is either included or not included. But we need to be clear on what we're passing. I have an issue with that. Okay, next. We have an application here for the Planning Commission, Mr. Mark Arch Carter. To make concern, I am hereby submitting this letter to express my interest in serving as a member of the Town of Argus Planning Commission as an independent candidate. I have been a long time member of the Argus community and I feel I will be a valuable member to this group as I have a great interest in the continued growth and prosperity of the town. With that being said, uh, it's my appointment to put Mark Harshbarger on the planning commission as the council president. Welcome, Lord Mark. Thank you. Okay, we have a um, mowing lien on uh, 301 North Michigan Street, everybody, the old Baptist church, old tabernacle, or whatever you want it is. Um, that the town has against it. In order for it to uh, the process of it being sold go through, we need to release that lien, and we need a 
his signature. So, is there a motion to accept the mowing liens in the amount of $930 to be waived on that property? I'll make a motion to waive the liens on the property at 301 North Michigan Street. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Are there other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Down. Anybody else got any other old business? Now we'll move on to new business. Sarah, would you like to speak? <coughs> For all everybody that doesn't know this young lady, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Sarah McCollum. I am the EMS director here at Argus. Um, I had an impromptu um, meeting with the chief fire chief of Plymouth Fire Department and the EMS director of Plymouth, and um, we are understaffed as far as EMTs, and our coverage is pretty handled at night, but during the day is questionable as far as if we have an EMT available. Um, they currently would come down and cover for us during the day if we did not have an EMT available. And due to their short staff as well, we were, I was informed today that they would no longer be able to do that. So we need to discuss some further options as far as bringing in EMTs to Argus. Um, I did a five-year plan just, as, just for you guys to look at for budgeting. But I also passed out a paper today, and that would be um, a proposed budget for 14 EMTs, which would be all part-time, two EMTs per shift, and that would be in the event of cardiac arrest or anything. Everyone is on the same page as far as what's expected of them, because currently we have um, volunteer drivers, and they're just CPR certified, but they don't know how to use the equipment, nor are they um, certified to in that case, we would be able to do the coverage for 24 hours, two per shift, and it would be a one, one 24 hour shift per week for the two EMT groups. And it would, currently we're budgeted at $54,400 for, and that you'll see on that paperwork, it includes the EMT salary, the shift pay, the driver shop salary, and the shift pay. Um, the proposed would be those two EMTs, and that would be 174,720. It is a big jump, but um, I don't know what any kind of flashbacks would be as far as if we don't respond to a call, but it's our obligation to provide that service. And if we can't get volunteers, the whole country is struggling, but you know, maybe this is offering a part-time job position would be a better option than volunteers that we can't find. Um, but I did make some notes down at the bottom of that where we might be able to cut some here and there. Um, our one ambulance is paid off and currently we're budgeted 10,000 a year for Argus 2, but that will be paid off I believe in two years. So that would be an extra 10,000 budgeted back into our budget. Um, again, we'd be cutting that EMT salary, the EMT shift pay, the driver shift pay, and the driver's salary because it would be two EMTs. I mean, there are other outlets we could try. That would that was just my proposed, um, just in the last few calls that I've been on, it'd be really beneficial for the patient care to have two EMTs. I mean, we're not looking at ALS currently because we do still have Culver is an ALS. We have Lutheran down in Rochester that would Come up and do assists. Plymouth said they would do an assist like usual if they had the manpower, which again, volunteering all across the country is a struggle at the moment. So I'm not going to lie, I don't know really what I'm proposing, but that's something that I needed to bring to your attention. And also, they did tell me today that it was um, currently our um, agreement with Plymouth is that they collect half of what we do for the run that they assist on, but they propose that next year, or maybe the following, depending on their budget, um, it would be a $300 flat fee for Plymouth to assist us. That could exceed what we even collect for the run. Mm -hmm. 
So that would hinder us in the long run. They did 15 runs for us last year. So if we budgeted for 20, that right there would be an additional 6,000 budgeted just for ALS assist from Plymouth. And I know you guys are really big on industrial, like, and just bringing more people to Argus. But if we can't provide 911 services reliably, I'm worried that some people are gonna be like, whoa, you know. So that's kind of something to really think about as far as the EMS there. I know I'm just the bearer of great news. No, we need to see this. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It needs to be done. Something needs to be done. But um, on the other hand, um, hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be able to show you that I am recouping more costs from charts that we are submitting. And we're all up to date on that for the year. Um, we're also looking for, we're doing our first fundraiser at the TGIF, even if it's just a bake sale, it's something, more than nothing. Um, hopefully just getting out there. Um, we have a couple more people interested in joining the EMS team. Um, currently as drivers, but they have shown interest <coughs> in going to EMT school. Um, um, we were, I was also thinking of doing things like standbys um, Lisa and I have been talking about Acumed and what we are allowed to charge for and things like that for hopefully a little bit more revenue here and there. So, I mean, I'm trying not to just be like, hey, we need more money, but hey, let's figure out where we can cut more costs and showing you that we are bringing more back for our services. So. Good job, sir. Gives us the tool to work with when we do the budget. Now you've got yes. something to look at and see. Thank you. Numbers are always better to see than imagine. So. Exactly. I think, aside of the numbers, I think we have more things to consider here as well as we go down the road. I, mean, I agree with Sarah 100%. If we're going to grow the town and we're going to try to grow industry, we have to have some kind of reliable EMS service to right. to ride to those people. They're going to demand that. Number one, we've got to figure this out one way or another. Yeah. Some somehow, some way, we've got to come up with an answer to this EMS situation. Right. Sarah, how much does an ALS or a paramedic make per hour? I'm just asking. I would say a minimum of 15 an hour. That's for ALS. We are BLS. Right. So if me in a private service, when I worked private, uh, private service, I was making 11 to 12 an hour, but that's private service. And that's right around average, so. But they said your teachers and your emergency personnel are the ones that are paid the least and the ones that are paid the most. Right? <laughs> Let's go play football. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Um, any more ideas on that? Now we do have this for budget time, so. I don't have any more ideas. I mean, I have like standby ideas as far as maybe for clubs and things we could do a $50 standby here and there or something to bring in a little bit here and there. Um, I was also going to talk to Mark, surprise Mark, um, doing like a joint fundraiser, maybe like a pancake breakfast, because neither one of us have the manpower to do it ourselves. Maybe if we do it jointly, we could get something done. So, And you know, the community realizes that, hey, Let's help our fire department and EMS out. We could totally use hands. Let's just do all of them join a There we go. <laughs> Split it. It's easier. It's a lot okay. easier. <laughs> all right, thank you, Sarah. Thank uh, you. Move on to resolution 2019-6, uh, resolution of the Argus County Council authorizing investment in public funds. That's pretty self-explanatory. We have to renew, we used to renew it every two years. Um, they have put regulations on it for municipalities have to renew it every year now. So is there a motion to accept the resolution 2019-6? I'll make a motion to, go ahead Suzanne. Go ahead. All right. 
Sean made the motion, Suzanne seconded it, and we're moving on. Resolution 2019-6, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next is resolution for locking commercial dumpsters. And by the way, we haven't got one put on ours. Wait. Church they have put on. They're working on it. Okay. Um, this is just kind of for your review tonight. I, I would not like to just jump in and pass it. We have some issues that we still have to work out, like, you know, how many are we going to put on the north uh, west side of town? You know, there, we don't have an alley behind there, so we, we're still working on with Lake City Bank to try and see if we can put them in, in their parking lot on the side. Jamie and them had laid a pad for dumpsters. We were thinking about maybe if we had to, we could put four dumpsters <coughs> back or whatever we can do. We're working on that. But we can't just jump in and do a locking lid dumpster resolution. Maybe not tonight, but it was something to think about. I had Derek draft it so that um, if, we, if it came down to that, um, when we do get it all figured out, um, it has the locking dumpsters, I think, so far has reduced some of, of the out of town dumping that I, we had seen in the past. But they're not locked right now. They can, you know, um, if you want to put a padlock on it. And the business owner, of course, would not have to be there when it's dumped. It self unlocks when they dump it. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention and maybe come up with something for the future. All right. Thank you. I have one new thing on the new business. Uh, the Parkside Church is asking to close the street between the church and the park again this year on August 11th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the annual carnival. Uh, the electric cook up again. That'd be August 11th. So with that, I'm asking permission. Excuse me? 4 p.m. Do you need a resolution? I just need a motion to accept the police. Somebody want to make that motion or are we going to not close the street? No, I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a motion to allow the street to be closed for the carnival for the Parkside Church. Second. On August, whatever the date is. 11th. 11th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any others before we go to claims? I've got a couple things, and these are like kind of like leases, things to think about. This was brought up to me by someone else. Perhaps as a town or a council, we send a letter to all of the people on the boards, commissions, just emphasizing when they agree to be on a board or a commission that there is some responsibility to that and we would appreciate their attendance and if they're not going to participate to please resign so we can replace them. And you know, we struggle often getting quorum at many of these. So that was someone brought that suggestion up that perhaps we consider doing that. So I don't know if we want to do it or not. But another thing that was being discussed, and I know we've discussed this before, get all materials to Lisa on Friday before the meeting. Get everything to her so she's not putting things, adding it at the last minute. That's being disrespectful to her. And when things are just handed to us at the beginning of the meeting, different things, we don't have time to read it and look over it. That's not good for us because we're not, we can't do a good job. I'm sorry, I had my meeting today. I couldn't get it to you. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> <Flushed in. laughs> Yeah, but it's totally me, 100%. I'm like, here, take it. Hold <laughs> on. Oh, no. wait any time to fall on your sword. <laughs> Two very good points. I I'll take that. I need to rest, so. And I'm as guilty as the next person on getting things to her by Friday because I'll forget about it and Monday morning I'll go, oh, crap, there's a meeting. Let's yeah. <laughs> 
it's just getting to the point where I get it all on, you know, the day of the meeting or yeah. whatever, and then I'm passing them out. And then you got to like, strange because I kept this? looking for two days for the stuff to come in the email, and I usually always have it by Monday night, and I'm like, where's the stuff? And I finally got it this morning, yeah. and I squeezed it in my lunch hour and looked it over. All right. Is that it, Suzanne? Those two? Yeah. Well, yes. Well, <laughs> there's not a lot of difference. Yeah. Well, 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 yeah. There was a county meeting of MCEDC, everybody from the community. George couldn't attend. I did make it. I did make it. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong there, meeting. That was the other meeting. Yeah. Okay. You're there was two meetings. Late. There you I, go. I made the one. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> you made one, I made one. So this was talking about everything that MCEDC has done around the county. And it was significant. Sometimes we don't realize how much they are doing. And one of the points of the meeting, if they can get more funding, because right now Jerry spends a lot of time out raising funds. So if, <clears throat> there was no definite answer, but just an awareness that if he wouldn't spend as much time working on getting funding for them, because they do not have a large budget to work with. Sometimes we think they do, they don't. They do not have a large budget to work with. But if they could put more of their efforts into developing projects within the county. And we're already going very well. We have a lot of things going on, but it would be even better. And I guess I've learned through the last few months, Jerry is working hard, and he is working hard for Argus. So don't underestimate what he's doing for our community. We may not always seem that he is. So that was from that meeting. Then Basically, that's it. Cool. Thank you. Anybody else? I have something unrelated from that. <laughs> <laughs> the town do, um, contributes to the Humane Society every year a sizable amount of money. It was brought to my attention this week. A resident went to the Humane Society and asked to use a live trap of theirs and was denied saying that they don't get it back. This resident also offered to put a deposit down to use one of their live traps and was still denied. I think, you know, if a town resident makes the effort to drive up there and, you know, offers to give them a deposit even to use a live trap with the money that the town donates to the Humane Society, I, I don't know, to me I just think that's wrong and I think something should be said about it. I want you to write a letter of concern. I will. That's what the board so chooses. I just think it's, you know. <laughs> I've written a few letters. Go for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think we're, that. We're trying to act. We're giving money. So, you know, them trap, they could buy them traps if they didn't get the money. So well, that's kind of where my thoughts come yeah. from. We had, we what? Have <coughs> The we have traps here. Yeah. Yes, oh. I borrowed from the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Police department. We did the same thing. Police department. We yeah. finally bought our own. There you go. <laughs> this resident was trying to catch a raccoon that was getting into a yeah. Yeah, there's like cans. cans. There's a very large trap and a small trap upstairs over there. Mm -hmm. there well, tell that resident to come over to my house and borrow mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just the point, the Humane Society. Yeah, yeah. right. I, yeah. I, you're right. It's a point. They should <laughs> I just catch you in the trap. Sure. <laughs> I think they ought to be a unified front from the town. Let's move the claims up. I got to go work. I died. Okay. <laughs> Please. Lisa. The total docket is 401765 dollars and ninety-nine cents. The top five claims are as follows. Number one is input at $134,371.78. Number two is payroll number 11 at $36,484.12. Number three is payroll number 10 at $36,023.64. Claim number four is striker sales at $22,712.64. Number five is Herman Getz at $17,535.47. Top five claims total $247,127.65 and represent 61% of the total docket. Fast enough, George? Yeah, great. <laughs> I move to approve claims 565 to 652. Second. Um, any other questions? Not all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 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 Thank
Perry. Thank you, everyone. We have a workshop immediately after, unless somebody has to go to the restroom. Adjournment. Adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.